Brand new Camaro ZL1, brand new Mustang GT500. You've seen it before. Pretty much everyone knows that car handles better. This one's faster in a straight line. So we're not gonna bother with that test. Instead, we're a couple of muscle car guys. We're just gonna find out which car's playing more fun. We're taking a road trip to Speed World Drag Strip in Arizona, which is at risk of closing, and that can't happen. So we're gonna drag race these cars there and be really irresponsible along the way. We're just installing radar detectors because the company doesn't pay for speeding tickets or bail. I'm betting it just says, plug into cigarette lighter, drive like a jerk. Wow. I've never had a radar detector before. Ford conveniently put this 12 volt power outlet right in the middle of the dash to plug in your radar detector. I think they knew. So my favorite thing about the Camaro probably from the driver's perspective is the heads up display. That's just cool because some of these gauges like the ones down here on the console are completely useless. Last thing I'm going to do at 160, 70, 80 miles an hour is look down to see how much boost this thing's making. But at least the heads up display will tell me how fast I'm going right before I die. It's good info. I actually like the interior in the Mustang much better. I can see the dash, which is a big problem for me in the Camaro. The factory Recaro seats are awesome, and I really like the vintage, like, 69 look and stitch pattern on them. The dashboard looks almost like a 67 or 8. The steering wheel is cool. I like that the bottom of it's flat, kind of racy. Makes it easy to get in and out of the car. Shift knob's cool. This feels less plasticky than some of the other new cars I've been in. If you're gonna drop this much money on a car, it shouldn't feel like plastic. It should caress you in soft, supple leather or suede. The shifter, however, fairly sub-average. I have a hard time bang shifting this thing. It's notchy, like right before gear engagement. It's almost like there's two motions to get in every gear. It bugs me. Fuel economy, why? You know, it's interesting, there's this big battle over which of these cars has better top speed. And all the Ford guys are saying this Mustang runs 200 factory stock. The thing is, there's really no place you can do that. It takes like five miles, something like that, to get one of these things up to speed, up to 200. That's high risk of both death and arrest, like high risk. So we're basically fiddling around with what they're like to drive on the street, drag strip, having fun, sliding around, doing burnouts. Let's be professionals about this. Professionals about this? There's no part of the show that's professional. I was hoping you'd tell me how to act like one. Okay, well, act like a guy trying to find out which one of these cars sounds better. All right. Okay. <laughs> get real used to this scenario. Gas station. I'm prepared for science. We have the three basic styles of road trip cups. You have your 44 ouncer, your 32, and your tapered 44, or 32 or whatever that is. And the thing about these cars is that the cup holder's in the console and it always either isn't big enough or it hits your arm while you're shifting, or it won't hold it. Okay, there's actually two different diameters of cup holders in the Mustang. And I have to say, it's doing a mighty fine job of holding the tapered cup. Here, hand me the bladder buster. I sense a fail coming on. Yeah, I'm gonna call this acceptable. That's good. Now let's go with the full-on 44 ouncer. It does fit in the rear cup holder. So the only next challenge is whether you can bang shift with that in there or not. Okay, moving on to the Camaro, we'll start easy. Oh, it also has two different diameters, except for in this case, the large one's in the front. Okay. That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Although you will note there is no chance you would fit two of these in the car. That's something we need to check on the Mustang. If you have a buddy with you, that's not gonna work. See, you try and get this in there, and that's just, that's not cool. The medium fits in. Now let's go for the bladder buster. Nope, fail. 
Camaro is fail on Bladder Buster. All right, well, all that's left is the bank shift test. second in a horrible way. Yuck. So, I guess the conclusion there is that you can drive these things with the cups in it as long as you don't want to be a hot rodder. Not a greedy guy. I don't ask for a lot. All I wanted to do was go drag racing tonight. I know. But we made it. We're at Speed World. Made it just in time for the rain. Yeah, I waited just in time for the killer thunderstorm, which isn't happening right now, but it got wet enough that they had to shut down the track for the night. So we're not going to be able to run the Camaro and the Mustang. But we're having fun anyway. We'll figure out something to do. Just kidding, we're going racing. It is the next day, it is not thunderstorming, and the bitchin' guys here at Speed World opened up the track on a special deal so that we can make some laps. We're putting on drag radials. We got these Killer Mickey Thompsons, and Ford Racing sent us some wheels for the Mustang. We got some used wheels for the ZL1. We're gonna have sticky meats. Hook these things up. So competition to see who can drive them quicker, right? Oh, you're going down. Okay. I bank gears but, like nobody. I, I do too. I just miss them when I'm driving the Mustang. That's a problem. These are going to heat soak and slow down. So whoever drives each car first is going to win. So who's going to drive what first? You miss gears in the GT500 and the Camaro is probably slower. So let's just rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Smash I Mustang. Lose. Okay. First drag race with Freiburger. 154 degree inlet air temp, not good. None of that matters if you can't find second gear, dude. I might not ever find second gear in this thing. I hope for your sake you have some sort of strategy. I'm not gonna get fancy until I can figure out where the second gear is on this little doohickey in the console here. I don't blame you. <laughs> Loser buys dinner, and I'd like a steak, thank you. That's what happens when you forget to turn the launch control on. You lose punk ass and you're buying dinner. Woohoo! Oh no, that's by average at the end of the day. That's not this one pass. Oh no, that was that one pass. You lose, you're buying dinner. Woohoo! You are a cheating SOB. You went red by almost three tenths of a second. That's a test day. That's why God invented Christmas trees to keep guys from leaving early. Yeah, see the RPM limit on the launch control does not work. A 2360 foot and a 20 for you. Here's what sucks is I kicked your ass all the way to a thousand feet and then have to shift into fourth right before the lights and that's when you catch me. If I didn't have to shift one more time down there, I'd be winning by a lot. Seriously, 1269 and you're walking around cocky? 1270 and I'm even arguing with you? It's that's pathetic. what that's what guys who come in second say to themselves to make themselves feel better. So you're winning! So you're plenty proud of your 1269 out of that 11 second car. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I keep looking at the inlet air temperature, which this tells you on the dash, it's 160 degrees when I leave the starting line. Blowers don't like that. This thing's not making power. <laughs> Africa was this sticky. <laughs> it's pretty sticky. 
explain to me why it's this sticky and we couldn't make either car hook up. Well, well it's because it was- It's a matter of physics. It's 150 degree track temperature is part of the problem. Physics. And it was 113 degrees out and making no power. Physics. Yeah, so essentially we're disappointed in our performance at the drag strip, but I think Finnegan's got to be more disappointed than I am because I did run the lowest ET, the highest mile an hour, and had the best reaction time, so I win. Which car were you in? The lighter one with the more horsepower? Uh, we both drove yeah. both of them, right? That was it. Yeah, we both drove both. You made 87 I... laps in the Mustang and right at the end went, here, this thing's heat soaked, make one or two. Well, but it didn't matter how many laps ah. you made when you miss every gear on every pass. Ah. You know, he misses first, it's so bad. Ooh. <laughs> You got nothing. I'm sore. You got nothing. I'm sore. <laughs> yeah, we proved that uh, you're a Camaro driver. Oh, yeah. That's what we proved. I kick ass in the Camaro. You're okay in the Mustang. So bottom line, uh, the cars are way slower than they should have been because of track conditions. We ran 1244 in the Mustang and? 1269 in the Camaro. Okay, so that's roughly, what, eight tenths slower than either one of them should be? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've been three tenths faster in that Mustang. Yeah. Than we went today, but dude, it's 105 degrees out. So now we make our own fun on the way home, right? Burnouts and donuts. Donuts. If I don't blow out a flip flop on the way out of here. Good luck with that. All right. Hey, we lived, we didn't get arrested, even though your cloud of Goodyear smoke is still hanging over Arizona someplace. These cars should have come with respirators. That's all I'm saying, <laughs> dude. They are smoke. good at making That's smoke. what they're both really good for. So overall, you're still taking the Camaro? Oh yeah. I'm taking it home right now, actually. <laughs> okay, he's we a Camaro one, guy, one I'm a Mustang this car, guy. I'm driving it. it home. It's hard to look out at my Super B and go, oh yeah, that's when muscle cars were great. It's like, man. No, muscle cars are really good right now. Yeah. Really, really good. It doesn't get any better than this, unless they put more power in them next year. So basically you can't lose. You buy the red car and you win. <laughs>